Hey, I'm Sam and I do design, and in the video today, I'm recreating this photo in Keyshot. It's a slightly different video for me today. Usually in this series, I like to make a really quick Keyshot scene that takes me about an hour, and then speed that up by roughly two times, and then I can do this voiceover with a nice and quick video. However, uh, this, this scene uh, really kicked my butt and it took me about three hours to finesse all the materials, finesse all the lighting in order to get something that I was happy with. Uh, so I've sped this up an awful lot so we can still do this in under 20 minutes, but essentially I'm going to take you down a rabbit hole <laughs> that I went down myself for this scene where I tried all different types of materials only to land on something really, really simple at the very end. So I tried for hours, I really tried hard to get this as accurate as possible, and I feel like the entire scene really rested on how light interacted with that curtain and how much light it let through versus the, uh, the actual shadows itself on the curtain. And yeah, it really kicked my butt trying to get that done. So what you just saw me uh, model in is a program called Shaper 3D, and I just modeled this on the desktop version. It's uh, an iPad native app that is now available for Windows and uh, Mac. And that's just a really simple push-pull tool to allow me to just make these boxes and generate the overall shape of the room. Now, I did not use the original photo as a reference in Keyshot first, so aligning the cameras and making sure that the window was in the right place, the table was in the right place, uh, I could have done a much better job at that. However, this was more of an artist's impression of the photo, not necessarily a like-for-like, pixel-by-pixel -like, pixel recreation. So what I would have done definitely if I started again, uh, and if I wanted to do this again, I, I reckon I could make this scene now in about half an hour, rather than the 30, uh, sorry, the, the three hours <laughs> that it took me to make this. I would actually make the plane that the window is a part of, so make that wall that the window is attached to a completely separate body. So right now in the scene, it's all connected into the house and it's all one uh, component, which means that if I want to push the wall slightly closer but keep the doorway that we're looking through in the same place, then it gets tricky, right? So I would make that as its own part in in uh, Shaper 3D and then bring that into Keyshot and allow me to scale it, move it, position it, and get the right camera angle. So throughout this scene, I've been rendering on GPU mode, which I found uh, for interior scenes like this, complex interior scenes like this, actually gives a slightly better result. Uh, it might not be as accurate, you might not get super accurate shadows, but the noise that it generates is a much more manageable way of renderings where you don't get huge blotches of different colors like you might do in the interior mode of CPU. With GPU, it's all uh, super small, tiny uh, noise. So by this point, I've already got the curtains in and I'm using a, a, an advanced material uh, to allow some light to come through and I'm playing about with the HDRI. So the HDRI is an image that wraps around the entire scene and anything that is light in that image, in this sphere of, of light, anything that is light is a light source and anywhere that is dark will create a shadow. So I'm just playing about with um, where that light needs to be. And you can see already I've got some uh, shadows on the floor, which I want to try and keep as much as possible. So I really like this scene for being able to see the stripes on the floor generated by the pleats in the curtain. And as I go through and, and try to balance getting that shadow effect on the floor versus having an accurate shadow on the curtain itself, so having the window panes and, and the, uh, the trusses of the windows um, cast a shadow on the curtain versus how much shadow on the floor it casts, that's the rabbit hole that I went down in this episode. So I really tried to uh, create that as realistically as possible. For the longest time in this episode, I used the Keyshot Advanced Material for that. And with the Advanced Material, you can specify the specular transmission, which is how see-through it is, and also the diffuse transmission, which is how much um, the light bounces around inside the material and how soft and um, 
frosted that material looks. So I thought by using that, I would be able to generate all the different aspects of the curtain material that I needed. However, it was a really, really intense material for Keyshot to render. And I ended up cheating in the, in the end by trying to add in some opacity and trying to add in different elements that I could cheat with different texture maps, allowing sunlight all the way through and then allowing or creating shadows on the floor where the, sh the, the curtains are slightly thicker. So I did cheat in the end, but that's the rabbit hole that I went down. Uh, I'm jumping the gun a little bit. We'll, we'll get to that. Right now I'm just adding in some extra products, some extra models that I have downloaded. Most of these models, if not all of these models, are downloaded from Dimensiva. So uh, there are plenty of free models on Dimensiva. I have just bought a month of uh, downloads so I can download any models that I want. And I did that to get this wishbone chair, which is in the original scene. Worth mentioning also that uh, this scene, I found the picture on the Find store on Instagram. So shout out to them for a really nice collection of images that I got to choose from. And then as I add in these products, I'm also dialing in each material uh, in order to match the scene that it's in. So what I found from Dimensiva models is a lot of the time the wood texture that comes with the, the texture, uh, the model pack, uh, it's really quite vivid. And in a lot of the scenes I try and recreate, the, the wooden material needs to be a lot more uh, neutral, a lot more toned down. So I just add in, in the material graph, in between the texture for the wood and the actual uh, geometry material itself, I just add in a color adjust node and then take away the saturation and make sure that it's a nice neutral color to match the rest of the scene. It was also really important to figure out how shiny the floor should be. So if the floor is completely matte and there's no reflections whatsoever, all you see is the, uh, the shadows on the floor and that's all that, that appears in the, in the image. However, if you add in some slight specular highlights and you add in some, some slight glossiness, then what you get is a nice effect where the shadows are on the floor still, but you kind of see past those shadows and the reflection is, is also there as well. So it was, it was balancing that to get some shadows on the floor, some reflection on the floor. If you go completely glossy and go completely perfectly smooth, then you don't really get any shadows. Uh, that's how Keyshot sort of figures things out. You sort of lose the shadow detail. Uh, so it's about finding that balance. Equally with the uh, material of the wall and the brick texture as well of the ceiling, um, trying to make it as matte as possible so that we get some nice soft shadows and some nice soft uh, highlights uh, around it whilst also giving it an ever so slight sheen. Here you can see that I'm adding in a few baffles. So I'm adding in extra planes in Keyshot just to block off some of those windows that I added. Uh, I have three windows in the main dining room room. Um, and I also have two windows in the room that the camera's in to try and bring some light into that from the HDRI. Um, again, I would try and do that slightly more modularly if I was to model this again so I can move those around or I ended up blocking them off. Uh, I was getting too much light in the room with the chairs in and realizing that a whole bunch of light was bouncing off the inside wall and bouncing onto the back of the chairs and really taking out all of that contrast. So I ended up adding in the baffles to almost completely block off the extra windows that were in that scene. So we're only seeing light coming through the curtain window. And here you can see me just flick between the reference photo that I have open in Photoshop versus the key shot scene that I have uh, that I'm working on. And here's where I'm starting to cheat by adding in some opacity where I add an opacity map, a gradient map, and anywhere that the camera is looking at uh, perpendicular to the camera, to the material, that opacity map will be uh, slightly transparent. Whereas as, the, as it rolls off and goes around the pleat of the uh, curtain, uh, I want to make that more opaque so there's less light coming through. And that's how I was achieving these nice stripes on the floor. Uh, so I thought, great, I can cheat this way. And, and you know, I have the, the gradient map helping the shadows on the floor. However, that made Keyshot go into overdrive and completely and utterly 
just generates so much noise <laughs> um, in the scene. So I got a really painterly look and with the denoise effect, um, it, it, even with 5,000 samples, 7,000 samples, I ended up rendering this out at and it just looked awful. So that goes to show that um, I rendered that overnight and came back in the morning and it still looked like someone had painted it, which is, you know what, a great look if you want to go for that. But I was going for this really realistic look. So I had to take another look at the material of the curtain. And right now, like I said, I'm, I'm adjusting the specular highlights of the floor, trying to change the uh, position of the curtains, trying to bunch up the pleats to get more striations on the floor, more shadows and, and intricate details on the floor. Uh, but then I realized that the pleats were too intense for the actual curtain itself. So eventually later on, I ended up going back to uh, resetting all of that position. And then on the screen of the, uh, the Mac that we have here, I just added in some variations to the roughness, some variations to the specular highlights, just to break it up a little bit. It was a little too... One of the benefits that I had from rendering this out the, the night before is that I could then see, okay, for the other materials, not necessarily the curtain, but for the rest of the scene, what else needs to change? And uh, I could tell that the, the MacBook uh, screen needed some variations in there, so I added those in. And I also realized that I left off a whole bunch of props on the on the desk as well. So I added in this glass uh, ribbed um, cupware, this tableware set, which was really nice. And also a, a pen holder, again, that I found on Dementsiva, um, just to really add a little bit of life to the scene. Originally, when I when I rendered this out the night before, I, I saw that they were in there, but uh, didn't really bother to to add them. But I'm glad that the, the scene didn't work out uh, overnight and I had to render it again. And here you can see really quickly the fireflies that are happening through this really intense curtain material where the the denoise of Keyshot is really having to go into overdrive to to compensate for that. And um, by this point, I haven't realized that I should change the material completely. I'm still in the advanced material that, that I think is going to really work this. And I'm still trying the best I can, this time with a slightly different approach to the opacity trick that I was trying to do. So instead of defining that by the camera and the uh, gradient map, I ended up changing that to a wooden texture where I, I applied the wood texture and changed it to white and black, where again, it's just driving the opacity. It really didn't work out, so I thought, okay, this is where the rabbit hole starts to get deeper. I'm like, okay, let's help out the scene where we don't need so much denoise happening. Let's add in an IES light. And an IES light is basically a spotlight um, built on geometry, so I added in uh, a, a spotlight type thing with a, with a really soft gradient just to try and give some extra light to the inside of the scene and, and, and help out with Keyshot's Fireflies issue where it was generating white dots where it wasn't sure what color the pixel should be. Um, I ended up keeping this IES light in the end. Uh, I thought it was a nice addition just to throw in a little bit of extra light. But what I actually, what ended up actually happening was I changed the material completely from uh, advanced to translucent and I'm going just and I'm just going to show you the settings now of this translucent material where it's so much more self-explanatory we have the main surface we have a surface that uh, the subsurface that you can start to see through it and then that cleaned up the scene instantly and then all of a sudden I didn't need to render this out at 7,000 samples I could just do a thousand uh, and I could even lower the denoise settings as well just to try and Give a little bit of detail back because the denoise really crunches the details. And with that simple change from advanced to translucent, it really brought this scene to life. So after rendering, uh, I just put, brought it into Photoshop and I already had the, I had the uh, clown pass specified to add into the Photoshop file as well. And that's really going to help me just select some of these areas and help bring in the highlights and the shadows and really dial in to making it look like the original image. Now, this scene that I'm Photoshopping is the previous scene that I recorded to Photoshop where the, the floor shadows were not quite right, the material was not quite right. However, 
it was so similar to the finished version. Um, I, I didn't re-record the Photoshop part. It's all the same part. Select using the clown pass, select the different materials that I need to, uh, to, to push and pull. And then you can see that I'm dialing in some of the color and the, the values to match it perfectly or as close as possible with the final image. One of the last things I did was change the background into a smart object and then went into the camera raw filter section as part of the filter tap toolbox in Photoshop. And all that allowed me to do was add in some more grain, some more filmic grain, which uh, the, the camera raw filter does a really good job of replicating traditional uh, camera grain, whereas the, the native Photoshop, if you just go in and add noise, uh, it's not quite the same. So that was one little trick that allowed me to uh, bring some life back into the scene and after, after the, the denoise had, had taken away all of the details. So after the Photoshop, all I did was save as a JPEG and then there we have it, the uh, image on the left, the photo that I copied on the left and the key shot version on the right. Again, plenty of things I would do differently. I would, number one, make sure I got the camera angle correct first. Uh, but I'm really pleased with how the cursive material came out. I'm really pleased with the lines on the floor, the lines on the table of the shadows, uh, along with the computer screen as well. Um, really pleased how this one came out. So three and a half hours of work compressed into 16 minutes. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you learned anything, do let me know down in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button and everything else that YouTube asks you to do. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.